this is the first thing in Sunday school that uh, we are we are taught to, to mem memorize. And I tell you, it has helped people a lot all over the world. There was a time when the war was going on, and in the deep trenches <coughs> during the war, uh, it was damp, it was cold, it was dark. And at that time, a soldier could survive in that cold in those trenches by remembering Psalm 23, by reciting it to himself. The Psalm 23 gave such a strength to that those people who were there in, in those trenches, cold, damp trenches. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. So I would like to invite you to, uh, to this task. Try to memorize Psalm 23. You never know which occasion, where it will come handy for you. Just before an examination, just before a, a trial, sometime when the flight is going and there are air pockets, Psalm 23rd. It's a psalm, a very popular known psalm. So many hymns are written, so many songs are written on this psalm. It's a psalm of trust. And I want to invite you to enter into the life of a sheep for one day. This is a psalm about life of a sheep from morning till evening. The morning starts when the sheep says, Lord is my shepherd, I shall not fall. This is the beginning of the psalm. This is a, the, the day of a sheep begins with this statement that my trust is on a relationship between my shepherd and myself. And this is the declaration in the beginning. I do not trust on my on any other thing, but my trust is on a relationship. And this relationship is the is the is the basis of uh, life of a sheep. Sheep depends totally on shepherd. So right from the morning, this uh, starts. All the needs of the sheep are taken care of by shepherd. There is no bargaining between shepherd and sheep. The shepherd, shepherd never tells the sheep that if you do this for me, then I will do it for you. If you behave this way, then I will behave that way. There is no bargaining involved. There is no haggling involved. It is, uh, there is no more a give and take in this relationship. And that is why it is the, the basis uh, of that life of sheep. In India, uh, there is a, a very interesting uh, advertisement on TV. It comes. It's an advertisement about a visa card. 500, uh, uh, say 5,000 rupees for a flight, 500 rupees for taxi to reach home, 5 rupees to, to the colleague on the station and then you reach home and the mother's food priceless. This is how they put it. 5,555 and then at the end what we get for all that we spend money is priceless. Because that is based on a relationship. That is based on a, on a trust between a mother and a child. Between a family and, and the family. So right from the morning, the sheep says, Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I will not be needing anything, I will not be lacking anything. Uh, I mean, uh, I hope you will bear with me, I will be giving the, the illustrations uh, back home from India. In India, we have a, a set of uh, saintly people. And that set has a saying, they say, uh, in Hindi they say, Na kuch batle ba, na kuch ghatle ba. And its uh, meaning is, I do not have anything, I do not own anything, but I, but I do not lack anything. I do not own things, but I do not lack anything. How can this be? And this is because there is a trust, there is a relationship. I depend my life on a relationship. Not on uh, my bank account, not on my securities, not on my investments, not on my uh, shares, not on my trade, share trading markets, no. 
And this is what the sheep is saying. God is my shepherd, I shall not want. Isaiah says, why do you spend money for something that does not satisfy? Come, eat. It is for you. Then, after, uh, in the morning, the sheep, shepherd takes the sheep outside. They go out, and then the first thing is, he makes me lie down in a green pasture. Green pasture is the place where the food is. And for this food, there is no queue. For this food, there is no grabbing. For this food, there is no haggling. There is no pushing. There is no elbowing. He makes me lie down in the green pasture. Pasture is there, food is there, and you are there. You eat as much as you want. You eat when you want, at your own pace, in your own way. Because uh, sheep needs, after eating food, sheep needs a time of relaxation where sheep can cut it. Chew, chew and cut the food that the sheep has eaten. So a time, an atmosphere of relaxation is needed for the sheep. So he makes me lie down in a green pasture. And then after that there is a time for, for, for water. And on the hills, all the rivers, all the streams, they are fast flowing streams. And sheep is a very timid animal. Sheep is scared of running waters. Sheep cannot drink, put, his, uh, put her head down in the, in the water, in the running water, because sheep is scared of that. The shepherd goes ahead. Shepherd puts two, three stones on the, on the side of the stream and makes a small pool. And there the water is still. The rest of the part, the stream is flowing wild and wild. Whereas in the, in the corner here, the, the shepherd has made a small still water, a pool of water where sheep can drink. Shepherd knows the fears of his sheep. Shepherd is aware that these are the things which scare my, my sheep. My sheep is worried about these things and he takes care of them. Then after that, when the food is eaten, the water is, is uh, drunk, then the, the shepherd restores them into their life. They are restored back. They, they have food, they have water and they are happy. Then after that, the shepherd leads them into the path. If you know sheep, uh, you will never find a sheep looking up and finding its way. Sheep always follow one after another. They, they put their head down and they just look at the feet of the, the one walking ahead of them and they follow. So if the first sheep falls in a pit, the rest all will go and fall in the pit. And that is why it is very important for shepherd to follow ahead in the right path. And especially uh, the scripture which is coming from a desert area, from Judean hills. In desert, the path is very important. Because the wrong path can lead to death. In desert, if, the, if we do not know the right path, we may end up in a don't know where. Therefore, it is important to have the right path, path of righteousness. And in that path, the shepherd leads them. And the sheep follow the shepherd, their head down, one after another, they follow them. When they go in the path, there are valley of shadow of death. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil, because thou art. The shepherd is not promising sheep that all your path will be the, the petals of rose. I am not going to lead you in a path where you don't have to struggle, where you don't have to walk, where you don't have to sweat. But the path may be having the valleys of shadow of death. But in those valleys, I will be with you. And the sheep is, is not scared because sheep is going with the shepherd. And then the statement is, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Rod is a straight stick and the staff is a, a stick which has a, a crooked end at the end which has a U shape. So the staff is there to help them if they fall off the main path into a valley, to, to pull them up. And the rod is there to punish them if they 
fall off by uh, by their will to discipline them back. So the staff is for support and the rod is for discipline. So both of these things together help sheep to follow on the right path, to go straight on that path. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, you are with me because your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And then it is a time for afternoon. Afternoon, the sheep again uh, comes to a plain field. And uh, the field, there are bushes around, there are rocky grounds, there are edges, rough edges. And that is the time when sheep must have food again. And that is the time when the shepherd has to make sure that table is laid before the sheep in the presence of their enemies. There are enemies lurking in the dark. There are enemies, predators under the bushes. There are thorns and thistles which are hidden under the grass. The sheep can hurt herself. There are rocky edges where sheep can get cut, bruised and scratched. And in the presence of the enemy, shepherd prepares a table. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful image of a table in the presence of the enemies. There was a time we had a consultation in Korea. And uh, we were taken to the border of North Korea and South Korea. And on the border of North Korea and South Korea, there are some houses through which the border passes. One of that house is called as a Mac house. You must be known. Half of the Mac house is in North Korea, half of the Mac house is in South Korea. It's one house. And in between the house, there are cement slab which passes through. And they have put a table on the middle of it. So from time to time, the people from North Korea, they open that door of the house and they come in and they sit on those uh, chairs. And the people from South Korea, they come from here and they sit on this side of the table. And in between, they have flags of UN. That table is a place of reconciliation, a possibility of reconciliation. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. In Indian culture, or maybe in several Asian cultures, uh, putting a dastarkhan, putting a table, laid out table with food for negotiation, for reconciliation, for marriage uh, uh, negotiation, it, it's, it's a possibility. So that table could be a possibility where we can have a, a food, we can have a meeting with even those with whom we cannot see eye to With whom we have issues to deal, to settle, to resolve. Psalm 23 provides us that. In the, he prepares a table in the presence of my enemies. And then it is a time to feed him. The sheep is returning back. When the sheep is returning back home, okay. right. shepherd is sitting at the door, the pan, sheep pan, and one by one, sheep are entering. The first one comes, shepherd knows her by name and puts his hand all over the sheep, touches her, her mouth, her head, her feet, and sees if there is a thorn stuck somewhere. Because the sheep has wool all over. If there is a thorn stuck, shepherd will take it down. If there is a scratch or cut somewhere in the paw, shepherd will take it down. If there is a cut or a scratch because of a stony uh, ridges or, or sharp edges, shepherd will put their olive oil at those places. So when the, when the she sheep is returning back home, sheep is saying, Thou anointest my head with oil. And then this hand of healing, this oil of healing, helps each sheep to return back home, even after the whole days of uh, outing. And then when the sheep enters inside, each sheep is given a, a big cup of cold water, a cup which is overflowing. There is no grudging, there is no half cup, there is no quarter cup. But the full cup, a overflowing cup of cold water is placed in front of each. My cup overflows. 
And then that is the time everybody is in their places back. And that is the time they look back and think what all happened over there. What all happened in our relationship, what all happened with my shepherd and myself. There was time of enemies, there were times of anxieties, there were times of worries. Then she looks back at the whole day and tells herself, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord. I want to live in this house. I want to live with my shepherd in this house. Dear friends, this afternoon I want to invite you to this shepherd. David who wrote this psalm was a shepherd all his life and he knew that sheep is a dumb animal. Sheep is not a very clever animal. Sheep is very dumb because sheep is so scared, so, so timid, uh, very soon they get timid and, and they are scared. But shepherd David wanted to be a sheep in the hand of that sheep. He wanted to commit himself in the hand of a uh, shepherd like a dumb animal, like a dumb sheep. I am willing to be a sheep in your, of your sheep then. Lord, accept me. And I want to live there all the days of my life. And that is what he did. Are you willing to Am I willing to do it this afternoon that come let us make this relationship our relationship? God is willing to be our shepherd. Are we willing to be a sheep in his household? Trusting on him, trusting on his relationship with us and then so that at the end of the time when we come we, we may say surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will live in the house of the Lord for that. May God bless us all. Amen.